Hello. In this video, I will be discussing a question that, unsurprisingly, very many people have asked before, but one that no one to my knowledge has attempted to answer. Namely, how many sentient creatures die across all the Pixar movies? This is a continuation of MadPat's effort to calculate the same for the Disney animated classics. I will be stating this in order of time. First, I will be laying out my ground rules, modified slightly from MadPat's. First, I will only be counting sentient creatures. That means that while I will be counting Coral's death, I will not be counting the death of the fly that Spot kills for Arlo. Second, I will only count deaths that occur during the runtime of the movie, unless the death occurs during a flashback shown on screen. This means that while I will not be counting Carl's eventual death after the events of Up, I will be counting the death of the Devers' parents. Third, I will only count deaths that are caused by a character, entity, or event in the story after they have been introduced. This means that while I will not be counting the deaths of the flies in A Bug's Life, even though they are implied to have occurred during the run time of the movie, I will be counting Ellie's death because while old age isn't an antagonistic force in A Bug's Life, it is an up. Now we can look at the films. Toy Story only kills a combat Carl, so it has a total body count of one. A Bug's Life is a bit more brutal. Its first kill is an unnamed bug who flies into a light in this random scene that has absolutely no bearing on the plot, on the plot whatsoever. It was, it, the scene is literally just there to kill that character. Its next three come when Hopper kills three of his own grasshoppers to show everyone else what might happen if the ants rose up against them, and the last is Hopper himself, for a total of five. Pixar's next two films, Toy Story 2 and Monsters, Inc., on the other hand, have no deaths. It may seem that Randall's fate was, at the, was death at the hands of a Cajun crocodile-hating family, but tie-in material actually sh show he survived, so that removed is the only possible death in that movie. And now, we have Finding Nemo. It might seem that this innocent movie about a fish would have zero deaths as well, but this movie racks up 400 deaths in the first few minutes in the Barracuda attack. For the purposes of this analysis, I'm going to assume there are sentient beings within the eggs, as Coral states that the eggs were dreaming. We have to subtract one because Nemo survives, but Coral dies, so that balances the, things out. Since Chuckles and the anglerfish's deaths occurred outside of the runtime of the movie, and we know Bruce survived because he fit, visits Dory in the end of the movie, 400 remains the total. And Finding Nemo has established itself as the bloodiest Pixar movie so far. Pixar's next film, The Incredibles, is also a little bit of a bloodbath. Mugging isn't always accompanied by murder, but it looks like but it looked like the mugger was also stabbing the victim, so it's safe to assume the victim died. And then we have the no capes montage with Thunderhead, Stratagal, Meta Man, Dinaguy, and Splashdown, so there's five more. Then we have the skeleton of Gazebream, so that's another death. Then we have the men who got hit with the transport car. We see one of the men move, so we know survived, but I don't think the other one was as lucky, so that's another death. Then, then there's the guy Mr. Incredible hit with the rock since the fall from that height after getting hit in the death by a uh, getting hit in the face by a rock thrown by a superhero would probably be fatal so that's another death. Then there's Universal Man, Psych Wave, Everseer, Macroburst, Phalange, Blaystone, Downburst, Hypershock, Apogee, Blitzerman, Tradewind, Vectress, Stormicide, and Jam and Gamma Jack. There's probably even more, but we're not extrapolating for the purpose of this analysis. That's 14 more deaths. Then we, uh, then there are the five guys who Elastigirl shoves into the closet, then the 13 people who die in the chase scene and the fight afterwards, so that's 18 more deaths. Then there are the three guards Mr. Incredible beats up. In the final battle with the Omnidroid, while we can assume the stationary cars to be absent of people, as we see one clearly with no occupants, when the Omnidroid is chasing Frozone and Dash rolls over six moving cars, which I would imagine would have an average of three people each, so that's 18 more deaths. Then there's an, the Omnidroid 10 itself. 
I would argue that the Omnidroid 10 is the only sentient Omnidroid, as it's the only Omnidroid that showed any signs of thinking for itself, so there's just one, de one death there. And finally, there's Syndrome, for a total of 64 deaths. Not quite as many as Finding Nemo, but definitely more individual deaths. And with that, we're at the point where we have a bit less deaths. There are no deaths in Cars, and Ratatouille only kills off Gusto. Wally, on the other hand, has quite a few deaths. While the apocalypse was certainly a huge event, it technically didn't lead into any, into any deaths because it was the softest apocalypse ever. Additionally, since all the other Wally units died off screen before the events of the movie, they don't count either. However, there's still plenty of carnage in this movie. There are four robots guarding the con there are the four robots guarding the containment unit, the robot John and Mary splash water on, the thirty-five Hulk robots that get beaten up by that one robot from the containment unit, if you know what I mean. Otto's bodyguard start with an H, like H O something. And finally, Otto. For a total of forty two deaths. Up also has quite a few deaths. First we have our, oh, first we have Ellie, arguably the saddest Pixar death. Then we have the people months killed. I counted six helmets on his mantle. I'd say it's safe to it's safe to assume he he killed all six, and there's no evidence he killed more than that. So that adds a so that adds six to the total. Then there are the lost dogs. We can count that months has fifty dogs at this time due to the scene of the dogs encircling Carl and Russell. Since these dogs are in their prime between two and eight years old, and, and since breeders give their dogs a year and a half between litters, these dogs are within five litters. These are big dogs, so they're likely around eight to twelve dogs per litter per breeding pair, consisting of a stud and a female dog. Doing the math, we see that fifty dogs divided by five litters divided by ten dogs per litter per breeding pair yields one breeding pair. Female dogs are ready to bear the strain of carrying puppies at two, and breeders typically only have their females give birth to four litters, so there will be a 2 minus 1.5 equals 0.5 year gap between breeding pairs rather than a 1.5 year gap. A breeding pair will be active for 1.5 times 3 plus 0.5 equals 5 years, and since months has been here 69 years, calculated from Carl's ages at the beginning and end of the movie, he has gone through around 14 breeding pairs. Each pair will give birth to 4 times 10 equals 40 puppies. We will not need to count the, pu the puppies months has when Carl comes because 70 is an over approximation of 69. 14 times 40 minus 50 equals 510 dogs, so 510 dogs by die by the time Carl comes to Paradise Falls. Unfortunately, you don't know the percentage of this count that died from old age rather than dying, searching for, or chasing Kevin, so I will assume about half of the dogs and died in the jungle. This is still a monumental number, 255 dogs, and is most likely an over-approximation. Finally, there's Charles Munson's Charles cell, for a total of 263 deaths. There are no deaths in Toy Story 3, but Cars 2 more than makes up for the 2010 movie's deficit. First, there's Leland Turbo, then the car who falls into the ocean. Then Finn blows up a bunch of cars. We can see the rate at which they enter the twisty road is... I, I, for some reason, I can't remember what that thing is actually called. It's seven cars every two seconds. And Finn spends 21 seconds on that road. So multiplying 21 seconds by 3.5 cars per second yields 73 dead cars. Finn just casually kills 74 cars in his, esca in his escapade. Then there's the, the American Spy, and three of Finn's assailants, for a total of four more. Finn's fourth assailant, while Finn did send him flying, we see that he's still alive after the scuffle, so he doesn't count. Then there's the boat that Finn blows up, and finally the henchmen who get presumably killed in a bar. That all adds up to 81 deaths, even more than the Incredibles. Brave is actually much less deadly than it may look at first glance. At first glance. Yes, Mordu killed hundreds of people, but that was all outside the time frame of the movie. So, so the only death in Brave is Mordu, is Mordu himself. Monsters University, like Monsters Inc., has no deaths. 
the good dinosaur kills off Henry, but there's little evidence any of the other characters died, so there's only one death there. And now we're at something a little bit more deadly. Inside Out may seem like it has very few deaths, but it's like Finding Nemo in that its deaths are just a little bit less obvious. First, there's the clown town resident, then Bing Bong. Then there's that resident's wife later on when talking with the police. That's three already, only two behind B A Bug's Life. But that's only the start. The imaginary boyfriends are where things start to get a little crazy, since they all fall into the forgetting pit and therefore die. And therefore die for Riley. And there's the first imaginary boyfriend, then they fall into the bag at a rate of 9 boyfriends per 2 seconds for 20 seconds, meaning that 91 imaginary boyfriends die helping Joy get into headquarters. So this movie, seemingly innocuous, has 94 deaths, even more than Cars 2. Finding Dory, unlike Inside Out, has no deaths. I find it unlikely the giant squid died because squids can regenerate limbs. Cars 3, likewise, has no deaths. Doc Hudson did die, but he did so outside the time frame of the movie, so he doesn't count. Coco, ironically, also has very few deaths. Old Age is a force in the movie, although it's debatable whether it's antagonistic, protagonistic, or neutral, so Coco's death counts. Actors and De La Cruz deaths, while, occurs, while occurring outside the time frame of the movie, do count, since we see them in a flashback. Chicharro also dies in the movie. So all of this adds up to four. And that's it for Coco. Since even though it literally takes place in the land of the dead, none of these deaths count by our rules. Unlike The Incredibles, its sequel is surprising light, light on the deaths. You might think that there are a lot of deaths in, Incred in The Incredibles 2, since there are a number of fight scenes, but Elastigirl did a good job with making sure that there were no casualties. Not even the screen slaver dies. The only the only death that counts is the Devers' father, since it takes place in a flashback. While their mother did die, her death doesn't count as as it is merely stated, not shown, and she died outside the runtime of the movie. Toy Story 4 also doesn't have any deaths. While Mr. Lightfoot's first death doesn't count since it's outside the runtime of Onward, his second death at the end of the movie does. And three sprites get killed on a windshield, so that's a total of four. Finally, we have Soul. Surprisingly, nobody dies by our rules, since Paul Mittens and Joe all eventually get resurrected in all of the souls on the big conveyor belt to the great to the great beyond we don't know how they died so they they don't count and that's all the pixar movies to date in order of least deadly to most deadly we have the following in 10th place we have a tie between toy story 2 monsters inc cars toy story 3 monsters university finding dory cars 3 Toy Story 4, and Soul, with zero deaths each. In ninth place, we have a tie between Toy Story, Ratatouille, Brave, The Good Dinosaur, and The Incredibles 2, with one death each. In eighth place, we have a tie between Coco and Onward, with four deaths each. In seventh place, we have A Bug's Life, with five deaths. In sixth place, we have Wally, with 42 deaths. In 5th place, we have The Incredibles, with 64 deaths. In 4th place, we have Cars 2, with 81 deaths. In 3rd place, we have Inside Out, with 94 deaths. In 2nd place, we have Up, with 263 deaths. In our 1st place, we have Finding Nemo, with 400 deaths. This all adds up to a total Pixar body count of 962 deaths, for an average of a little less than 42 deaths per movie. If you, count, if you want to count the I at the beginning of each Pixar movie, this count is 985, for an average of about 43 deaths per movie. This is likely an over-approximation due to the over-approximation we made in calculating the body count of up, and may also have some level of uncertainty due to the number of people in each moving car at the end of The Incredibles. But this is my best estimate. 
985 deaths. And that's significantly less than 300-something million, so it seems Luthor Jr. isn't quite as murderous as Mickey Mouse. And with that, adios.